Welcome to Mechanical Drives and Bearings. This will be a Unit 1 Couplings. So, so what is a coupling? It's basically what you got is uh, two shafts, uh, rotating shafts. Um, you got the driving one, which comes off the motor usually. You got the driven one, the other one that's going to is going to move. And you, you want to put those things together, so you need to connect those shafts. And the coupling is the way we do it. There are three types, uh, rigid, flexible, then the universal joint, we'll talk about those in detail. A uh, fourth type you might think about is uh, centrifugal uh, couplings, kind of like an automatic transmission. Uh, we'll hit on a little bit, but we're not going to talk much about it. The first type of coupling we're going to talk about is rigid. Uh, th these things here, they're solid. They, they don't move. They're fixed, right? And you got one shaft coming in one end, another shaft coming out the other. Um, so, so if it doesn't move, you got to worry about alignment. And we're going to do an alignment lab, so I won't get into it much. But, but man, if you've got bad alignment or you can't align something, uh, your bearings start to wear out or you, you get start deflecting on some of the uh, mounts or it gets hot or cold, a lot of thermal expansion or, or the foundations on the machine, anything, anything that causes these things not to line up right, it's going to give you some issues. And rigid uh, couplings aren't very forgiving with that. Uh, what we're looking at here, this is a compression type uh, 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 coupling, uh, basically a uh, compression type just squeezes on the um, on the shafts. This one also has a key in it uh, to hold it steady. And th this is a rib type. The the ribs and 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 adds more strength to the coupling. Um, so you can see it's got bolts on there. So you just basically put this over a, a, a couple shafts and squeeze them together. Again, alignment's the big thing on this one. Another type of rigid coupling is a, a flange face type. Basically, they got these flanges, and what you're looking at here is a flange. It's got the keyway on that, so you slide that over the shaft. Uh, usually, there's a, a set screw or a grub screw that holds it on, and put a flange on the other side, bolt them together, and you got yourself a coupling. Um, another type is threaded. Basically, it's just you got threads on the uh, uh, shafts. You got a uh, coupling that's threaded. You screw it in there, and you're you're done with it. Uh, trouble is, you can't go both ways. Um, uh, it's either clockwise or counterclockwise. Obviously, if you go the wrong way, it becomes unscrewed. But uh, two types of rigid couplings. So if we want to tolerate a little bit of misalignment, uh, we got these things called flexible couplings. Uh, by far the most common, uh, much more forgiving than the rigid ones. But they still got to be aligned. Otherwise, you're going to get you know, like things like bearing failure, uh, fatigue failure. If you take like a paper clip and bend it back and forth until it breaks, that's fatigue failure. If something's rotating, it's going to be uh, vibration. Um, your seals, uh, a lot of these uh, hydraulic motors and engines are, are, are going to be connected to the shafts. You get a seal failure, you're going to get leakage. Uh, and, and they just wear out faster if they're not aligned. So so flex couplings, this is not an excuse not to uh, align your, um, your, your shafts, your couplings. Not an excuse, but more forgiving though. This is our mechanical flexible. Uh, the first one is a gel and slider. You, you'll probably never see these things. I've never seen one in industry. Uh, in fact, this picture you see, this is off an old tractor. Um, but basically, it's just got some jaws. You got a little metal piece in there. And that metal piece is the uh, connection between the two different um, uh, uh, jaws. Uh, chain coupling, what they do is they, they got basically a flange type goes over the keyway, locks down, and it's got a sprocket on it, right? And then, then, then you take your your chain and wrap that over that, and it runs in the, uh, the sprocket. This is a roller chain. We'll talk about chains and drives later on, but uh, the connection is made by the double chain. The silent chain, that's just a, a type of chain drive. Uh, if you notice that the uh, sprocket teeth don't come up through the chain, um, there's some advantage to that, and I'll talk about that in the ch uh, chain drive. Again, you can see that the two uh, the two sprockets bump up against each other. And you put a chain over the top of that, and the chain connects your two shafts. If you got something where a metal won't work, or you, uh, you for some reason, um, you know, corrosion or, or other reason, you might want to think about a synthetic chain, uh, just basically a chain made out of something that's not metal, right? Um, very, it's getting more and more application, but
but for heavy duty industrial, probably not the best idea. This is a gear coupling, and, and what you can see is you got a bunch of gears, um, and then you just put put some gears on the end of the shafts. You got some uh, teeth cut into a coupling, slide them together, bolt them down, you got yourself a gear coupling. Um, the reason it's flexible, by the way, is those uh, teeth have a little bit of slop in them, so so giving you some play on that, right? But this is a gear coupling, and we're again we're going to talk about gears later on though. Another type of flexible coupling is uh, material flexible. These are uh, couplings made with what we call elastomer materials. In other words, they, they bounce and, and they stretch and they return to their original shape. So, you know, things like rubber, neoprene, uh, plastic, nylon composites, uh, some flexible metal, and we'll, we'll talk about what that means later on. But uh, basically the material is the one that's flexing, not, not slop in the... In the uh, uh, coupling. Some advantages are you don't have to lubricate these things because they're not rubbing. Uh, smooth power transmission because these things, they absorb the shock a little bit and they don't conduct electricity. So, Okay, here's a couple type of material flex, but one's a rubber tire type. Um, basically, this thing's just a tire. So you drill some holes in a, a sidewall, uh, attach it to a bolt or to a flange, and then uh, do it on the other side, and the tire transmits your power, right? So it's just a big tire with um, holes in the side connected to a shaft. Very flexible, very flexible. So that rubber, again, is the flexible part. Jaw and spider type. The jaws on this, this is called, this, some people call these love joists by the trade name. But uh, basically you got these jaws, right? You see those two little rubber things in between? You're, only, you're gonna use one, but those are called spiders. You slip it in there, and those things uh, push and pull in, in, against that spider. So it's the spider that's the flexible material. Um, very, very common in industry. Very common. Spline rubber type. Uh, you, you won't see too many splined uh, uh, shafts in, uh, in industry. Uh, it's generally used for um, agriculture, uh, construction. Uh, mobile equipment, right? But this is what they look like. It's just basically just a, a piece of rubber um, or some kind of neoprene or something. And it's got uh, slots in it. Slides over the end of a uh, shaft that's got slots in it. And you got yourself a coupling. Uh, the elastomer, uh, very similar. Um, and you can see in this uh, this picture here, you, you've got a, uh, a shaft connected with a keyway. You slide that elastomer fitting on it, and that's that green bit there, and it stays connected. That's the elastomeric uh, uh, coupling. Again, elastomer is the part that's uh, flexible. This is a, a, a pin and disc connector. Um, actually, the one you're seeing here is a pin and uh, rubber bushing connector, but same idea, right? The, if it's just a pin and disc, it's, it doesn't have the bushing on it, and those pins fit directly in the holes on the, uh, on the mating flange. If it's got a bushing on it, then it's called a rubber bushing, and it's the rubber in there, right? Uh, if it doesn't have that bushing on there, usually these pins are made out of like uh, nylon or something like that. An alternative is just to make all these bushings instead of bushing, just make a big flat biscuit and stick in there uh, for the, the forgiving uh, part, the flexibility part. But all basically the same idea. Uh, you got a pin, you got a hole connected to. This is a flexible metal uh, uh, disc type uh, um, coupling. And if you look at that, I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, um, uh, the, the stainless steel uh, uh, disc, right? Um, in between, what they do is they stack a bunch of these up and, and they leave them kind of loose, right? So, so when this thing flexes a bit or something like that, it's actually like a big slanky. It just kind of opens up and closes as necessary. Uh, it's metal, right? Um, but because it's actually stacked up on layers, it's actually got a little bit of flex to it. This is a flexible metal disc coupler. This is a steel grid type uh, um, uh, coupler. Uh, as you can see, what you got is a bunch of, uh, you got basically a flange with a bunch of slots in it. And then you just take a piece of steel and just weave it in and out like there in between them. Uh, and it acts kind of like a spring. Uh, it, it kind of stretches and folds as it's necessary. 
and then you put a, a cover over the top of it, but it's a, it'll be very uh, flexible. It'll bend a bit because of the steel grid. Um, very effective. So let's say you can't uh, perfectly align something, and uh, I'm going to use my, my truck as an example because it's real, real drive. If you crawl under there, you'll see what's called the U-joint or the universal joint, and this is what it is, actually. Um, the drive shaft can't connect to the uh, transmission perfectly. So, so what we do is we put these things in it, right? And what it does, it, it'll, it'll bend and it'll turn. So it'll be kind of self-aligning, uh, very forgiving that way, right? I don't have to go in there and try to make sure my drive shaft stays aligned with my transmission. Um, in industry, this should probably be the, one of the last resorts if you have to do it. Um, again, we're going to do the alignment lab. We should be able to get this thing perfect, so these aren't necessary. But as a last resort, here you go. Oh, two types, single and a double. It should be kind of obvious what the uh, advantages of each of those is. This is a centrifugal design coupling, right? And and I'll let you read the advantages in, of, of this in um, in the book. But basically, it's just uh, you got uh, some friction pads on some metal, and it's on a spring. So as the thing starts spinning, it gets centrifugal force, and it throws those things out, and the friction will start driving the driven uh, shaft. Um, but the faster it spins, the more friction you have, because, you know, friction's what? Normal force times uh, coefficient of friction, and the better it works, right? So this is a centrifugal design coupling. This uh, this looks like automatic transmission because basically that's what this is, right? Uh, fluid couplings. Um, what they did is they used to take automatic transmission fluid, and it's not connected directly. The original ones weren't. So so what they would do is uh, the driving shaft would start spinning that fluid around, right? And the viscosity of the fluid would catch the, the driven shaft and start spinning that around. So they were never directly mechanically connected. It was only through the fluid, right? Uh, and later on, they said, well, heck, well, why, why use uh, oil and stuff? So they started putting steel shot in there, right? And that's a dry fluid coupling. So the steel shot acts like a fluid, even though it is uh, just BBs, basically. And uh, basically, it's the same idea, right? The steel shot flow in, in just like a, a fluid would. But this is like an automatic transmission, right? Uh, you don't directly connect them mechanically. It's all done with fluid. Finally, we got the space dirt coupling. Uh, this is the uh, uh, basically if you got to do a lot of maintenance on the coupling for some reason. So, so what the spacer does, it gives you some space, and you can actually take this thing apart, work on it without moving any of your uh, your driving or your driven uh, um, uh, shafts, right? So that's the advantage of a spacer coupling. When you need to do so a lot of work on the coupling, or thinking you have to remove it, clean it, whatever. You can get to it without uh, messing up your, um, your your machines, your equipment, spacer couplings.
So, so that's it. I know this was very brief and not much detail, but that's the intent. You'll get into the details with your worksheets. So do the worksheets, and then we'll get some hands-on with the labs uh, with uh, couplings. I've got some examples in the lab. Um, have any questions, come see me, email me. Um, just get in touch with me. I'll be glad to work with you. Um, see you at Unit 2 now. Thanks.